What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Today, I have another game-related uh, reaction for you guys. I need to make a gaming channel at some point, because I do a lot of gaming videos. <laughs> um, this is Crash Bandicoot 4. It says, first uh, gameplay details. This video was made by IGN. I will have a link for IGN's channel at the end of this video. All you have to do is click on it. It'll take it to the channel. You can uh, watch, subscribe, all the other good stuff. You know that they have a ton of content that you can check out, especially if you're a video game fan. But chances are, if you're a video game fan, you're already subscribed to IGN, so I don't know why I even said that. But with that being said, let's check this out and see what it has to offer. Crash Bandicoot has been one of the foundational mascots of Sony. Every single console generation, they try to get a new mascot, and for some reason, they just don't catch on. Like... PlayStation 1 had Crash Bandicoot. You could you can make an argument for Spiral of the Dragon, but I think most people agree that Crash was the mascot of the PlayStation 1. PlayStation 2 had Sly Cooper. Um, PlayStation 3 had Nathan Drake. Or you can go with Sackboy, one of the two, depending on which direction you want to go for. And PlayStation 4, who would be the mascot for PlayStation 4? I believe it was the, the Knack. I think Knack was attempted to be the mascot for playstation 4 but didn't stick around you know why because chances are a lot of you just said who what what is knack so that shows it didn't stick around too well um <laughs> but crash bandicoot was probably the most successful uh mascot that they had i remember all the commercials back in the day they were hilarious <laughs> and crash bandicoot just like disappeared there was a some point where that like they just stopped making crash bandicoot games uh, sometime after the PlayStation 2. And I remember, like, they tried to sneak Crash Bandicoot into some uh, some Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 era games. He had, like, tattoos and shit. I, it, it seemed weird. So I was like, I don't know what's going on with this. So I'm hoping that this uh, re or not reboot, but this rebrand of Crash Bandicoot, it actually doesn't go too hard on the the um cultural features that he has because it's like every time a video game mascot comes out at a particular time they always got to have the the cultural the pop culture things that are going on at the time like in the 90s all the mascots had sunglasses all of them had to be cool all of them had these weird ass outfits that were designed to look like a uh, 90s tough guy or some shit and I'm hoping that, that that's not the case. Like, I don't want to see this dude wearing no, like, Kanye shades or uh, anything stupid like that. But let's go ahead and check this out, see what it has to offer. How many times have you beaten uh, this clown anyway? Relatively normal. Three. Really? Only three? <laughs> Funny. Seemed like more. Hello, everybody. Max Scogel and Jonathan Dornbush. I'm, I'm here picturing, about the return I'm picturing of the Crash face. looking like talking about Crash somebody on, <gasps> He's back, on meth or Jonathan, something. Jonathan, what's up with Crash? It's constantly jittery. Well, it's about time uh, is actually both uh, applicable to this game happening and the subtitle of the game. Yeah, so uh, Activision announced Crash so that's the subtitle. 4, uh, colon, It's About Time, which is canonically set as a game after Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, which happened all the way on the original PlayStation. So this picks up from the story that happened in that game because at the end of that game- So separated uh, by Crash three generations of consoles. <laughs> some of the other villains. Basically out of time, they were uh, transported back to being babies uh, and well, trapped. Four, I guess, and so this game picks up after that happened no, and Neocortex is back and causing uh, time-related mayhem. And it's up to Crash and Coco to help Depends stop what that system this comes out for. Okay, so I have a lot of questions right out the gate, but uh, let's sort of back things up. Who's who's making this? So, uh, so this is actually being made by Toys for Bob. So they they have a time controlling mechanic in the game. Uh, looks like that'll be her feature. So I'm wondering if she has a particular game mechanic thing, then I would imagine Crash will have one too. He has to be more than just jumping and spinning. Uh, so the Crash Bandicoot and Sane trilogy was developed by Vicarious Visions, who's working on the Tony Hawk remakes. But uh, Toys for Bob worked on the Spyro Reignited trilogy. Uh, I believe that was two years ago last year. I don't know how time works, but that makes sense for this game. Uh, they worked on that trilogy, and so this is their next release. They did actually, you know, contribute to the development Damn, Crash. of the uh, Crash Team Racing remake and the Insane trilogy. So this, it's not like Crash is uncharted uh, territory for them. 
No, that sounds like it's definitely in good hands. Uh, now, McC sounds like what happened was the insane, the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy was so popular. They thought, okay, we need to do another Crash Bandicoot game because we got to catch this wave while it's still hot. So they decided to just make a sequel. <laughs> Mechanically, how different is this going to be from those Crash Bandicoot games that came out over 20 years ago? So I, that it's makes built me feel from so the ground old. up. Uh, this is, you know, they're not basing it on old code necessarily or anything like that. This is something that Toys R Rob is building from scratch uh, as a brand new proper game. And so it's meant to definitely feel like that. Uh, I spoke of one of the developers on the game and they were very adamant about, in their minds, Crash is all about precision and timing and really those difficult platforming challenges that you face. And so they're keeping the spirit of those original games and there's going to be, you know, the same perspectives we're used to either uh, running away from or toward the camera, side scrolling, platforming, all that sort of thing. But there will be new gameplay tricks that Crash Turned has. Uh, there will be wall running. I don't know uh, if that's rail grinding exclusive to that level or what. But... Play, including four new uh, masks that will give Crash different powers. New mask. But yeah, so they're basically kind of sticking with the same not really on rail okay so the time power isn't exclusive to the the girl character forgive me i don't know her name i didn't play um i really didn't play any crash bandicoots outside of the first one but it seems like that power is more exclusive to a particular power up so both of them can use it and they said there's four masks so that means there's going to be more powers that you can try out i would imagine one of them has to be the tiki one that gives you the extra life and maybe they'd have to upgrade it and put some type of new power to it but this formula but that the same kind of yeah. that we're used to yeah the, the the original three games you know there have been uh later crash games that happened that tried to open things up a little bit uh this is not going open world this is not changing the formula from these three games it's very much you know them saying this is crash bandicoot 4 is meant to evoke hey this is within the spirit of those three games it just is coming 20 years later okay so it's kind of like a sonic mania type of thing they're just they're taking the classic formula and modernizing it with a few new bells and whistles but kind of staying within that original style guide yeah, pretty much. You know, it's a, as I was saying, they like built the gameplay from the ground up. It's a it's a new art style, so it's not the insane trilogy art style. It's a bit more cartoony. It seems almost more in line with the uh, the reignited trilogy for Spyro, which they did, which I personally... That is dark. Damn, T-Rex went into the damn lava like that, which is interesting because I don't... From what I've studied, they said that... This is some irrelevant stuff, but from what I've studied, they said that if you were to fall into... a uh, vat of lava you wouldn't like sink into it like the t-rex just did i mean after all lava is melted rock it's still rather dense you're not going to sink into it like it's a pool i really loved the art design of that it was like a children's it's a cartoon though i know i'm taking it too rock, serious uh, to just life. an interesting so fact I, I totally for those trust that them to know. do that with crash especially because this game is going to go to so many different time periods i'm going to be able to play with the scenery a lot in really uh, fun ways I was going to ask, like, do we know, has has it been 22 years in Crash's universe, or does this pick up immediately where the other one lives <laughs> off? Well, so time has definitely passed, because at the end of 3, uh, Cortex was an uh, engine, and the other enemies were babies. So they're back to being adults in this game, so time has definitely passed. And in, in the reveal trailer, there's even a joke of like, man, so you only fought these guys three times? I thought so, yeah, that happened so many other times, of course, nodding to all these other adventures that happened. But uh, at least canonically from what they've told us, it's, you know, jumping from three to now this. I wouldn't be surprised if there's nods to all those games, because even though I think everything after that original Crash trilogy isn't as beloved as those first three games, there are still fans of a lot of what's been done in those games. So they'll, they'll probably have some nods if I had to guess. Nice. Well, it's like I said, it's good to see a familiar face. It's Crash Bandicoot, man. He's, he's a lovable rascal in jean shorts. What's, <laughs> what's not to like? Uh, and this is coming out later this year. This is in October. Yeah, it's coming to uh, current gen consoles. They didn't talk about, uh, you know, next gen plans yet, but obviously Xbox One games, it will be Xbox Series X compatible and playable there with backward compatibility, but no word on uh, PS5 or Xbox Series X proper versions yet. Okay. Nice. Well, it seems like it's in pretty so good hands. PS4 and, uh, games I'm, I'm dying and to see Xbox that old, that old One games, pretty much. <laughs> wow, as he would say. Yeah, it, it, it looks like a, a really fun first look, and I really trust that Toys for Bob team after the Reignited trilogy. So it it should be a fun new thing to like finally have a proper within the spirit of that original trilogy uh, new adventure. 
I'm still holding out for the photorealistic uh, simulation Bandicoot game, but I guess that'll have to wait a little bit. That's anyway, what next gen is for. <laughs> for more on Crash Bandicoot, his his uh, unstoppable legacy, keep it right here on IGN. Okay, so again, this makes me feel old because I was. I remember when Crash Bandicoot first came out. I remember when the PlayStation One first came out. Um, Crash Bandicoot is one of those games that. Oh, uh, just a side story. Recently, there was a trend on Twitter uh, related to Pizza Hut, and it was related to Pizza Huts in the 90s the way that they looked and the nostalgia of it people were just like reminiscing about hey remember when pizza hut had this 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 and this when i saw that i was thinking about sharing something but i didn't but when i think of crash bandicoot it reminds me of back in the 90s whenever you would get uh some food from pizza hut you could also uh apply to get a demo disc and the demo disc would have usually about like somewhere between nine to twelve games uh, that that were all on the demo disc that you could try out. And for me, I remember like games like Spiral of the Dragon and the Crash Bandicoot games and things like that would appear on it. It reminded me of that. So whenever I think of '90s Pizza Hut, I think of the '90s or the Pizza Hut demo disc that they used to give out. And all the games that were on it. And that, that demo just has some great games on it, too. Like Tomb Raiders, the uh, Twisted Metal games I remember they had on there. Bloody Roar, which is a series I haven't heard about being reignited in such a long time. They need to bring that back. Um, Tomba. I think some Final Fantasy games had some Pizza Hut demo discs on it. Or some Pizza Hut demos on the... Some demos on the Pizza Hut demo disc. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, there was like a ton of old games that would appear on the those Pizza Hut demos. And while I still miss demo disc, we don't really have to worry about it too much because now we have the ability to download demos. But the only problem is nowadays companies don't want to do demos. Like we have the technology to have, like constantly have demos at all times. All I got to do is go on and download them. But now nobody wants to make demos. It's crazy. Bottom line is, if you're going to take anything out of this video, it is this. Make more demos, goddammit. We need it. We deserve it. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Um, again, I will have a link for IGN's channel at the end of this video. Uh, click on the link. It'll appear somewhere right here. And it'll take you to their channel where you can watch all their other content. Um, I look forward to seeing what this game has to offer. I have not played a Crash Bandicoot game since the PlayStation 1 games. I have played the first Crash Bandicoot recently, but it was the PlayStation 1 version. I didn't play the uh, reintroduced one that was released on PlayStation 4 where they reimagined everything. Not reimagined, but kind of like remastered everything. I didn't play that, but I saw a lot of people get into it. I would like to check out Crash Bandicoot again, though. Now, with that being said... Also bring back Donkey Kong Country. I know it had a little thing. The Crash Bandicoot and Donkey Kong Country for me goes hand in hand because at that time I was also playing with my Super Nintendo still with the PlayStation and Donkey Kong Country. Do I need to talk about it? We can all we can all pretty much agree that Donkey Kong Country is like a master a masterpiece of a game, right? So yeah, bring back all those games. Nostalgia out the ass for everybody. I'm going to go ahead and give you the deuces. I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Until then, I'm Devon DaVinci. Hopefully you've been enlightened. And I'm signing out. Deuces.